Watching this video may save you $1,900 or even more because in just the five months from October of 2020 to March of 2021, nearly 7,000 people were scammed out of their cryptocurrencies or NFTs. The total losses from these cryptocurrency scams added up to over $80 million and the average loss was $1,900. I'm making this video to give you all the steps that I take to protect my crypto and NFT assets from scams. So if you wanna stay safe online while still enjoying all the benefits that come from cryptocurrencies and NFTs, well, this video is for you. My name is Devin Cook. I'm just a guy filming himself all alone in his room. And welcome back to Dev Money. All right, so first you need to know what the most common ways are that people get scammed with cryptocurrencies and with NFTs. Well, one of the most common ways that people are getting scammed is through Discord DMs. Although keep in mind that people do not limit their attempts to scam you by just using Discord. They'll also try on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, email, or any other way they can reach you on the internet. And you're gonna run into a couple pretty common scams that you should be aware of. One of the most common scams is someone will reach out to you through discord and they may seem legit even and they'll basically say hey get in early you know enter to win some ethereum or some other cryptocurrency or the ability to pre-mint some nfts before the public launch another common thing you'll start seeing especially in the nft world is right around the launch of a popular nft project you're going to start getting all kinds of dms on discord from accounts that look like they may even be the creators of the project they're going to say things like here come here to this website the launch has started come here to mint your nfts or they're going to say hey come here to be entered into the pre-sale to mint the NFTs. And if the NFT project has already launched and it was super popular, you're going to get DMs from people saying, hey, actually, there's still a few NFTs available to mint. Come here to this website and you'll be able to mint them as well. And I'll come into my Discord to show you exactly what some of these DMs look like. So you can see this one, for example, from Mechaverse team. It looks like it might be official because it's coming from the Mechaverse team. And the Mechaverse is a very popular project. And you're going to see a DM looking like this, where basically it says the raffling is now live. Here's the price. Here's the max per wallet. All these kinds of things, all these kind of details with a website for you to go to. Here's another one from Mecca Mint Info. Similar thing, another website, different from the first one, and all kinds of info about minting an NFT from the Mechaverse. Here's one from the Mechaverse raffle saying we are happy to announce the live launch of Mechas. Here's all the information, here's the link to go to, etc., etc. And these can look pretty official, but rest assured, they are not. One thing that you should be aware of is that most, if not all, of legitimate NFT creators will never DM you unless you first DM them. So that's the first thing you need to be aware of, is if you're getting a DM on Discord from what looks to be a legitimate NFT creator from a legitimate NFT project, know that it's probably a scam because unless you reached out to the NFT creators first, they're never gonna DM you. At least most of them aren't. Now I have 10 other tips that we're gonna go through. And the first one is to turn off your DMs on Discord. And you're gonna do that by coming down here onto the user settings right by your username. You're gonna click there, go over to privacy and safety. And then you're gonna turn off the switch that says allow direct messages from server members. This setting is applied when you join a new server. It does not apply retroactively to your existing servers. So you'll click that, you'll apply that change, and then you will not be able to get any DMs from any people on Discord, unless they're your friends. Now, the second tip is never to click a link that you aren't familiar with. Going back to this example from Mechaverse Raffle, if you were to click this link right here, mechamint.com, well, are you sure that this is the official link for the Mechaverse? And if you're not sure, do not click it. Don't ever click a link unless you know where it's gonna take you. Which brings me to the tip number three, which is to verify any links that you're given via DM or any other means on Discord or on the internet with the official links provided by the NFT creators. So for Mechaverse, for example, you can see that mechamint.com. You can see from these other DMs I was showing you, the mechaverses.net. We've got the mechaverses.net slash. So that you can see that there's a lot of different links that are being given on Discord. But the real link, when you go over to the Mechaverse Discord and go over to the official info section, you can see all of the official info and the official website is the mechaverse.net. Com. Not any of these other ones that we were looking at, those were scam websites made to look like an official website, but they really were not. So you have to be very careful because changing just one letter of the website address will take you to a different website, which may look identical to the official one. So if you're interested in an NFT project or a crypto, I recommend that you go over to the official links tab in their Discord and then bookmark that link so you can use it in the future. Now, the next tip is never to enter your seed phrase from your MetaMask or from whatever crypto wallet that you're using, unless you're setting up your wallet on a new browser or a new computer. And if you are gonna do that with MetaMask, make sure you go to the official MetaMask link because the same thing that happens with NFT projects where they change just a couple characters on the website address to send you to a different website that looks identical, the same thing happens with MetaMask. You get people that scam you and try and send you to a MetaMask website that is not actually MetaMask, but it looks like it. And then they're gonna scam you and take all of your money and all of your crypto and all of your NFTs. And you wanna make sure that you go to the official address. And if you're not familiar with a website and you're going maybe for the first time, you don't know what the official address 
address is. I like to check any social platforms, especially if they've been verified and then grab the address from there. So you can see on Twitter that MetaMask is verified. They have their address down here, metamask.io. This is the official address. It's gonna take you to this website right here, MetaMask. And this is the only address that you should go to if you're downloading the Chrome extension or the Firefox extension for MetaMask, or if you're looking to set up a new wallet, only use this address. And keep in mind when you come to the MetaMask extension on Chrome or whatever browser you're using, you only have to use your password once you have your wallet set up. You do not need to enter your seed phrase. MetaMask is never gonna ask you for your seed phrase at all ever. If you have an existing wallet that you want to import over to your computer or your browser, you can do that by coming to this import using secret recovery phrase section. And then it's going to take you to the official link where you can restore from your secret recovery phrase and you're going to make a new password as well. But that's the only time that you're going to ever put in your secret recovery phrase is when you're setting up a wallet for the first time on your computer. Now be aware if someone does get a hold of your secret recovery phrase, they can take all of your funds, all of your crypto, all of your NFTs, and you'll never get it back. So make sure you protect and secure your secret recovery phrase. Don't store it on your phone in the notes app. Don't put it somewhere on the computer. You need to store it in a secure place where someone cannot hack and get into it. And what will often happen if you click on one of those fraudulent links from the DMs that you often will get, you'll click on that link and it'll take you to a website that looks legitimate. And then it's gonna have a pop-up come up that looks just like MetaMask. This is the official one and it will look identical to this. It's gonna say, hey, MetaMask needs you to verify your account and enter your seed phrase to access your funds. And so people will put in their seed phrase because they think, well, it looks just like MetaMask and they'll enter their seed phrase. And then the people behind the website have your seed phrase and they can take all of your money and you're gonna see everything gone probably within a few minutes. Now, if this is all freaking you out, making you think you don't wanna deal with crypto and NFTs because of the risks, well, thankfully there are some really good solutions to securing your crypto and NFTs. And one of those, probably the most secure route is going with a physical wallet. And the two most popular hardware wallets that you can get is this one right here, the Ledger wallet. This is what I have and this is what I use. And also the Treasure wallet, also very popular. And if you do wanna get a hardware wallet, really the ledger and the treasure are going to do the exact same thing for you. They just have a couple different features and things that set them apart. But look into both of them. I did make a video on how to use the ledger and how to set it up and why it's going to protect your crypto. But essentially what a hardware wallet does is it's going to protect your private keys and keep them offline. And anytime you want to make a transaction, meaning you're sending money to buy an NFT or you're sending crypto to another crypto address, you have to actually physically with your wallet in your physical hands approve that transaction. You have to connect it to your computer via a cable or via Bluetooth, you'll sign the transaction on MetaMask on your computer, and then it's gonna send a notification to your hardware wallet where you will have to approve that transaction. Now, this means that even if somebody had your seed phrase and your password and everything, they still could not send money out of your account because they would have to physically approve of it in the ledger or in the treasure. And since they wouldn't have your hardware wallet, they wouldn't actually be able to steal your crypto. So even if you've made a silly mistake and you've compromised your seed phrase or your password after having already set up your hardware wallet, your crypto and NFT should still be safe. But keep in mind, you still want to be safe. Don't make silly mistakes just because you have your hardware wallet. You still will want to protect your seed phrase and your password at all costs. Now, the sixth tip is never to connect your MetaMask to a website that you do not trust. If you're going to a website the first time and it's asking you to connect your MetaMask, don't do it. Unless you know exactly what the website is, you're very familiar with it, or you know that it is a trusted and an official website, don't connect your MetaMask just as a good rule of thumb, unless you know what the website is and what it is they're asking. And on that same vein, tip number seven is to disconnect websites from your MetaMask frequently. So let's say you want to connect your MetaMask to a website like OpenSea. Well, you'll come over to your profile and you'll see a pop-up show up on MetaMask asking you if you want to connect. So yes, I do want to connect. And now your MetaMask is connected to OpenSea. But it's a good idea to periodically check what websites your MetaMask is connected to and then disconnect your MetaMask from those websites just for added security. So to do that, you'll just click on the MetaMask icon on your browser. You'll come over here to these three dots right here, click connected sites, and then you'll see a list of the websites that you're connected to. This wall is only connected to OpenSea and to disconnect it, you just hit the trash can, hit disconnect, and now when you come back to check, you're not connected to any websites. So make sure you're regularly going through your MetaMask and disconnecting it from websites that you've connected to. If you do trust a website a lot, like say OpenSea, you can just leave it connected and don't really need to disconnect it unless it would just make you feel more comfortable. Now the next tip is to check what permissions a website is asking for when you're connecting your MetaMask. So say we wanna connect our MetaMask to a website like vFriends. Well, we can come up here, connect wallet, hit MetaMask. It'll ask you what account you wanna connect to. And then it's gonna give you this notification. And it's gonna say that we're allowing vFriends.com to connect 
to account number two and view the addresses of your permitted accounts. So I would deem this a safe action because it's just wanting to see what I have in my MetaMask account. And if you're ever connecting your MetaMask to a website and the website is asking to not only just view, but also to be able to make changes and have control over your MetaMask, do not connect to that website. Only connect if the website is just asking to view what's in your account. And tip number nine is really gonna be helpful when you're transferring NFTs and you're transferring crypto. Always copy your crypto wallet address. Never hand type it because you're gonna be much more liable to make a mistake or a typo. So in order to do that, you're just gonna come up here to your account on MetaMask and then you'll just hit copy to clipboard. It's been copied and then you can paste that wherever you need to so that way you can send or receive different cryptos or NFTs. And as an extra measure of security, when you do paste your crypto address after copying it, I like to check the first three and the last three characters of the address address just to make sure that I've copied the entire thing. And tip number 10, this is extremely important, is really just to use common sense. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If someone's offering to send you cryptocurrencies or someone's offering to send you NFTs for free, you really need to be asking yourself why they're doing this and they're probably trying to scam you. That's not necessarily gonna be 100% correct, but I would say most of the time, people that are trying to give you things for free are really trying to take your money or your crypto assets. So let me know down below in the comments what questions you have have. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.